Kids, everybody in the world has failed. There's not a single person that hasn't failed a lot of times. Teachers, raise your hands if you failed hundreds of times in your life. Your teachers who are incredible are human beings who failed in small ways hundreds of times. That's what happens in life. The quicker you get comfortable with losing, the quicker you're gonna have a happy life. You don't wanna lose. It's not necessarily what you're trying to do, but not all losses are really losses. They're just step backs. They're just little moments in time and they're always an opportunity to learn and understand. And so I highly recommend you understand that losing is a part of life. One of the biggest mistakes that grown-ups sometimes make is trying to protect kids from losing. Losing is a part of life and the quicker you get comfortable with it, the quicker you're gonna have a happier life. I don't like losing, but I know it's a part. And when I lose, I try to reflect on what I could have done better. And then I try to bring that energy to the next time. So that's what you have to really realize. It's just a part of life, just like the sun coming up and going down and the moon coming up and going down. You will lose, you will get bad grades. You will lose a sporting game. Like you'll have a bad day. You'll lose a friend along the way. Things will happen and that's okay because you're strong enough to make it better. You know, I don't think I, I don't think I became an entrepreneur. I think I was born an entrepreneur. For everyone who's sitting in class, by the time I was in second and third grade, I was already really excited for the summer to sell lemonade. I liked to like hang out with my friends and create like a little, yep, get, get on me with that for selling lemonade. Um, I, uh, you know, I liked creating like little stores with my friends. You know, I would go door to, you know, in the 1980s kids, kids would just go outside and we would just ring people's doorbells and try to sell them flowers. Um, so I, I think for a lot of you, you just love music. You just love cooking. You just love school. I feel like a lot of people are born with things that they love. And I loved being a business mind and a business kid and a businessman. And then, but here's what's important kids. A lot of you love certain things skateboarding, rock climbing, you know, um, drawing, coloring, making music, making videos, being a good friend. But the key is to practice, right? Just because you're born good at something, if you don't practice and practice and practice and practice and practice, then you may not be able to achieve the highest levels of what you're trying to achieve. And so not only was I born a businessman or an entrepreneur, but starting around your age up until right now, I've been practicing almost every day at it, which is what's made me good at it, not just liking it. My first day in business officially was right after I was done with college. And it was in my dad's wine store. And don't forget kids, you can't drink wine until you're 21. But it was my, in my, uh, in, fair enough. Um, and so it was in my dad's wine store and I had been working in it since I was 14 and I loved it there. I loved helping my dad. So the way I felt my first day was I was ecstatic. I was thrilled because I couldn't wait to work for my family's business. And now I was done with school and I was ready to work. And it was one of the best days of my life. And the reason was because I was going to be doing what I was born to do, which is to be a businessman. Hi, my name's Hi, I'm and my question is, are you happy with your life? Mm, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, I'm extremely happy with my life. Kids, you may remember this, you might not, because I know how young you are, but even if one of you remembers exactly what I'm about to say for the rest of your life, then this is one of the best meetings I've ever had in my life, because it means you're gonna start believing this very early. I'm extremely happy with my life, because I'm thankful for everything I have and I have no envy or jealousy or wants or needs of what other people want. Kids, one of the biggest issues in the world is people are jealous or envious of other people. They want what they have. They want the kind of things they have. Maybe it's the book bag they have, the clothes they have, the money they have, the house they have, the toys they have. And this goes on forever when you get older. The reason I'm so happy with my life is because I never worry about other people. I actually only root for other people. 
I want other people to have those things. I'm happy that they have those things. I hope that they're happy too. But by keeping my life very simple and just being grateful for what I have, being grateful for what I have makes me the happiest. I'm one of the happiest people on earth. I really believe that. And that's because I keep things simple. As long as I have happiness and health of my family, I don't need things. I don't need things. I don't focus on things. And so my life is incredibly happy. I'm very grateful for what I have and I don't spend time worrying about what I don't have. My favorite way to solve problems is to try to understand what the other party or person is thinking about. So how many, hey kids, real quick, by show of hands or the move, how many of you have had disagreements with fellow classmates in your life? So what we saw right there is disagreements are a part of life, right? Even though you might be friendly with somebody in here, you might not see eye to eye on everything and that's okay. What you have to remember is you can't just focus on how you feel about it. You have to remember there's another person too. And you might wanna start thinking about why are they thinking that? Why do they see it differently? When I was a kid and somebody would pick on me or not be nice, for some reason, whether it was good parenting by my mom or because it was my the way I was born or probably a combination of both, I would always think they weren't being mean to me. They were in a bad place and they were unhappy and something must have been going on in their life and so they're hurt. And so maybe that's showing up with them not being nice. The way I solve problems is through compassion and through empathy and trying to understand what the other person's problem is and how we solve it. And sometimes that's complicated, like a disagreement or argument. And other times it's just partnering up to make something happen and you're trying to understand what they're trying to achieve. So the way I get through these things is by being curious and asking questions and always having good intent for the other person or party. So if you were in this audience today, you're a little Gary in the audience, right next to, um, you know, that with really awesome shirt. What do you want to tell yourself? You know, again, just that you feel like no one maybe gets you or no one sees you. What do you want to tell that little Gary in the audience? Little Gary struggled in school, but he did not struggle when he sold lemonade or when he rang doorbells to wash cars. So let me tell you kids about entrepreneurship. The number one cool thing about your school and the number one cool thing on the journey that you're on is even if everyone says no, that this idea is not gonna work. Your parents, your teachers, the people that you must listen to the most, but when it comes to entrepreneurship, even if they don't think it's a good idea and you think it's a good idea, you must try it. It might not work. And many of my ideas did not work. Many of my businesses did not work. But as entrepreneurs, like all of us are, it's almost like our destiny to try to make the things and the ideas that we have to happen. So I tell you in this class, even though I wasn't lucky enough to have a class like this or a school like this, even in this environment that you're in, there will always be people that don't think your idea is right. And they might be right. But you must try and see your ideas come into the world because you'll never live with yourself if you don't try, especially as you get older. Class, one day you'll be in the business world as entrepreneurs and I'm still gonna be doing this. And I cannot wait to work with some of you in the future and I can't wait for you to tell me that you were in this class. And so I love you and I can't wait to see you.